Okay, we decided to do a, a biome project, and, um, and, and this was meant to occur after a two-week unit on ecology, and um, it's going to be the uh, obviously an end-of-unit uh, activity, um, and it's going to be two days in duration. Um, involves our kids essentially going around the world using a virtual tour, uh, picking a biome and focusing on that biome, um, and researching all the data that goes along with that on the location as well as the uh, flora and fauna um, and then uh, composing a report and conducting um, essentially a, a presentation. Uh, we decided to do it, uh, the presentation using a, a science fair type of uh, setting. Uh, we were going to team our students up into pairs and then uh, break the, the class in half so that half would be presenting their science fair type uh, projects while the other half critique. Um, and so essentially we, uh, we have this ongoing um, presentation. Um, the students would uh, go through uh, discussing what they found um, using their uh, um, essentially their, uh, their research, um, discussing the abiotic factors, biotic factors, uh, um, and then presenting using a variety of uh, media sources such as uh, uh, posters, PowerPoints, um, graphs, data tables, pictures. They'd be free to use whatever they felt uh, would best uh, represent their ideas, um, including art and videos. Um, and we'd also require them to uh, provide handouts in the form of brochures uh, for the other teams to look at. And then, obviously, uh, at the end of all of this, uh, the students would uh, vote on the best presentations and on the best, best uh, brochures, and there'd be uh, prizes for those. Um, other factors that we uh, would en encourage, uh, a lot of info sharing um, between the teams and other classes uh, via blogs, texting, um, using the class website. Um, and as far as the critiquing goes, uh, we would provide the critique uh, students with uh, forms. We call them uh, share outs. Um, and on these, they would essentially record uh, information regarding each of the uh, projects, how they were presented to them, and also, uh, they would be encouraged to uh, ask uh, good questions and that would provoke um, active engagement and active listening. And then the next day, the, uh, the whole process would be repeated. Uh, the other half, uh, the other teams would uh, have their chance to get up there and present their biomes. Emily, do you, do you have anything else to add to this? Um, just the one part, we were also going to have them build a model of their biomes. Um, like in, in a fish tank, they'd be able to build, like if they were researching like a desert area, they'd be act they would be able to build, um, like build a model of a desert and be able to, you know, put, if they could like put a plant from a desert in there and, you know, even if it was a like a fake representation of an animal that might have been found there, just to have another visual to go along with their project. But other than that, well, I think you've covered it all. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I just kind of like ran on there, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was great. Well, any questions? Okay, we, we don't have too much time, so I'll, I'll be moving on to the next one, but it's a great idea to have them researching, making the brochures, and so I'll ask Team 2 to start getting ready, and uh, they have a, a, a law presentation they're going to be doing. And if you're not speaking, just put your 
Uh, just put your mics off so we don't get interference. That's the little speak button. Turn, turn that off. And that should stop the echoing. I'll turn mine off now. Megan, you've got the floor. And Jessica, too. Can you guys hear me yet? Great. Um, what we are doing is basically going to come down to a court case of the people versus, we're going to say, a company called Widgets, Inc. And what our whole thing is all about is our town has a problem with water pollution. And our students have to now figure out where the pollution is coming from. So they're going to have to use skills that they gather and learn throughout the unit to ultimately figure out who is polluting our water. So they're going to do a lab learning about water quality and they're going to use, forgive me Jessica, I've, forgetting the, I've forgotten the name <laughs> of the probe that you have for that. Um, oh, it's the spark probe, it's just a, um, it tests for dissolved oxygen as well as um, the pH of the water, just to see what levels it's at. It's, it's a spark probe. Spark probe, okay. So they're going to use the a data probe, the spark probe, probe for the water quality lab. They're also going to be doing a permeability and infiltration lab using their own soil samples from home, which will make it fun. We're going to see who in the class would be most susceptible to some pollutants coming from above ground. They're going to tap into some previous knowledge of contour contour maps and the students are going to have to do some research on the computer also and figure out who is responsible and Jessica if you want to take over okay can we go to the next slide okay so our um, culminating project is is kind of long we're going to do it over I think it would take about a week probably um, to do the project in total, but we're going to have them first do some research on real life court cases. Um, we were thinking about showing the movie Erin Brockovich or something like that, but um, we want to get them to do some research on their own on the computers to find out court cases that have gone on such as this dealing with some kind of pollution so that they have an idea of how it plays out. Uh, before we go ahead and do our own court case in the classroom. So we're going to do that, and the next piece is um, a document with a contour map of the community that we created that they're going to have to actually develop the contour map and the location of the factory, which is ink, in, and then find out where the pollution is coming from and how it's going downstream and how it's moving by using these contour maps. So they're going to have to work like detectives. After that, um, they're going to have to put a paper together um, that reports on the data that they collected using the labs that we had them do, the research from the real life court case, and the contour maps to kind of prove that Widgets Inc. is actually responsible for the pollution. And then finally, the last part of it would be the court case. And uh, Megan and I had talked about even having other teachers come in maybe to watch the court case and have a defense you know, and, um, oh, okay, and have them make sure that, uh, to see who we think, if, if they prove their case, that we just think is actually responsible for the pollution. So that's pretty much it. I think that's a great, great activity, and you could easily bring in social studies, too. So um, it'd be very interdisciplinary. And I think you could get them arguing all sorts of different sides of the equation. So you know you could practice skills at logic and argumentation. Uh, so I think it'll be fun. And I hope you do it. And you could bring in your bio teachers as well. So uh, lots of good activities here. Thank you very much. And I'll slide in the next slide. I think this is Don and Dan, uh, and Ben, excuse me. <laughs> 